Hello and welcome to the Fat Boss Guide to Grand Emperor Shekzir, 10 Man Normal, what a shit name, in the heart of fear. Yes, it's not that bad of a name, like, it's a bit shit. It would be worse if it was called Gary or something. Grand Empress Gary. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so good. Anyway, for this fight you want to bring two tanks, two to three healers, three healers probably, because the last phase was quite crazy to be honest, and a mixed DPS for makeup. Now this encounter does have three phases, and to start off we're going to talk about phase one. Now in phase one there's about four mechanics, and we're going to talk about each one individually, starting off with Cryoterra. Now Cryoterra is a debuff placed on a random raid member that makes him do ticking AoE damage on the raid. Now we're going to discuss how to deal with this in a little while, but uh, yeah, j just remember that that's what it does. There's also a debuff that's applied to the tanks called Eyes of the Empress. If the stacks breach five, it'll transform you make your mind controlled and you'll start fucking shit up. Yeah. Don't let it happen, just make sure you taunt them four stacks. Exactly. Simple as that. Another ability that the boss does is something called Dead Screech. Now this will just do um, uh, 80k odd damage to two random players and it also does damage to everyone within five yards. So just make sure you spread up five yards. I don't think it will hit melee, but try and melee as well. Just be aware that that's happening. But the main mechanic in this phase is Dissonance Field. Now two shields-like things spawn on the ground. Now if you're inside them, they absorb any magic cast inside, both heals and damage. Uh, these shields slowly run out of energy, and once they hit zero, um, they uh, explode dealing 220k odd damage to the whole raid, and even more if you're inside it. Now because there are two of them, if they both detonate at once, you'll be one shot. There's no, there's no two ways about it. However, luckily for you, you can actually make it so one explodes before the other now the way you do this is by when you do cast magical stuff inside um, it will make it so the energy of those shields will deplete faster and this is where cry of terror comes in what you need to do when you do have cry of terror is that you want to be running into one of the shields this will make it so the energy goes down quicker however just be uh, careful that when you do have cry of terror of you it's still doing damage to you inside and of course you won't be receiving any healing from outside so just make sure that if you are going to die quickly come out and get healed and then go back in this will just make it so those shields would just be spread apart so it'll be 220k damage then uh, like a 10 second odd gap and then another 220k damage giving the healers time to top everyone back up so for this phase the whole thing is just dealing with those dissonant shields so they explode at two different times by going inside with the um, cry of terror and that's really it for this phase the phase will end after 150 seconds because the boss does have an energy bar that depletes over a long period of time and it is a two and a half minutes per phase one now phase two will start as soon as the energy of the boss has completely gone down um, and phase one will then start again after phase two once all the energies come back. In this phase basically Shexir just fucks off, she's completely untargetable and so he gets her energy back as, as Lord said um, and it takes also two and a half minutes. So you have two and a half minutes per phase um, one and two and it will just keep going and going and we'll talk about the criteria of how getting into phase three but um, we're going to talk about phase two first and phase two is all about the sets of ads that you get. Now on the left and the right hand side of the room you'll get a group of ads that spawn, both groups consisting of one reaver and three wind blades. Now both ads have like individual abilities, um, however they do have one ability which they share is called Band of Valor. Uh, and this basically makes when, they're, when the ads are within 8 yards of each other they give each other a 30% damage buff. Um, and this this does stack. So if you have four ads on top of each other, they're doing 120% more damage each. Yeah. Which is a large amount. If all eight ads are on top of each other, then yeah, you're just gonna die. Um, so at the beginning, your tank does pick up all of the ads on each side. So one tank on the left, one tank on the right. Um, so you just gotta make sure that when you pick them up, because they're doing so much more damage, you might wanna uh, pop a cooldown and healers just be aware that they are going to be taking a lot more damage. Now we are going to go into the individual abilities of the ads. I'm going to start off with the Reavers. Now the Reavers have an ability called Poison Bomb. Now this just hits random players doing a bunch of damage and then ticking damage every two seconds. Can't do anything about this. It just goes on random players. You just have to heal them up. They also have an ability called Toxic Slime, which is like a frontal shockwave type effect without a stun um, that deals about 90k nature damage anyone caught in it. Um, so it's very, very important that you tank the ads facing away from the raid because, yeah, it's just unnecessary damage. You don't want people getting hit by this and obviously the tanks, you can't avoid it, so you just got to eat it. Now the most interesting thing about the Reavers is um, an ability called Poison Drenched Armor. Now this is a debuff that is applied to uh, the tank that is tanking them and it makes it so whenever you run near a friendly um, player, you also give them a debuff. However, it should really be a buff because what it does is it makes it so um, you have a chance on your attacks to do 50k extra damage. Um, so what you want to do when you have this as a tank is uh, when you're not tanking or it's safe for you to take 
um, the Reaver or whatever near anyone else. You want to try and coat everyone in this poison drenched armor debuff so that they will be doing additional damage. Um, the best time to do this is of course when your Reaver will be um, trapped, we'll talk about that in a second. Also um, when you're not tanking at all because this can continue back on into phase one if you got it just towards the end of phase two. Um, so you just want to coat everyone and it will just increase the damage they do. Now the Windblades, they have a fixate, they'll just target a random player and the fixate lasts for 30 seconds. Um, if you are fixated, you need to make sure that you don't stand near any mobs because you don't want to buff, you don't want the, mob, the mobs to buff each other with the damage. So just make sure that if you are, yeah, just stand away from other people. And after 30 seconds, they'll just go back to the tanks and then they'll cast it again and go off again. They also have a buff that they put on themselves called a Dispatch, and this just makes them do 70k uh, damage to random players every now and then. You just need to have someone to dispel these, like a Purge or anything like that, just to get rid of that magic debuff. And they also have a Sonic Blade, which is just an empowered melee attack that interrupts any spell casting. There's not really anything you can do about this, healers just need to be aware that it will happen and you do need to heal it up fairly quickly. Now the main thing that these um, wind blades do, and it's the whole like point of this um, phase two, is that they have something called sticky resin. Now they'll throw a little orange blob on the floor, and if you run through it, you will gain a debuff, slowing you by 30% and dealing 25k damage per second. However, when two players, both of the debuff meet, they um, create a bubbling resin patch on the floor, and the debuffs are removed from them, and they make this lovely little patch. Now this is kind of like a little place where you'll go deposit all your debuffs. So if you run to, over to this with the debuff, it will remove the debuff from you and add it to the pile. Now once four stacks have been added to the pile, it will create an amber trap. This amber trap is uh, when you run a mob over this trap, it will stun them and deal 5% of their HP for two seconds. Now what you want to have happen is that you want to have your tanks take the reavers over this because the wind blades, they have fuck all health and the reavers, they have a bunch of health in comparison. Now because you do have two reavers, you want to be making two traps, one for each mob. Um, uh, so you, what you want to do is you want to try and complete one trap first and then you want to try and complete another. Um, you might have some extra resin left over, you might want to make another trap just in case you do have another phase two to make that quicker in that phase, but um, just make sure you have those two traps. Also make sure, you, as I said, you don't want to take a wind blade over it because it's a complete and utter waste. Um, however, the wind blades do do something quite funny when the trap has been activated by anyone. They'll um, stop fixating or anything, they'll just run over towards that trap and try and kill it. What you want to do is that you just want to be AoEing the shit out of them um, and also you can do knockbacks and stuns and stuff like that in order so they don't break the trap. Now, Chances are that they probably will break the trap, but the Reaver would have been in there for such a long time He's probably been taken down to something like 10% So it's it's very easy after he comes out of that that you just quickly kill him off But this is a really good opportunity to get really nice AOE out on these ads Which are normally spread across the whole room also with the bubbling resin patches if there are already like if there's already a patch down You don't want to make a new patch Otherwise, you'll just end up having like 10 bubbling resin patches down and no amber traps and oh shit the boss is suddenly back Oh dear, white face. So yeah, just make sure, the whole thing is just about making these bubbling resin patches into the trap so you can kite the reavers over the top of them and that's the whole phase really. Now ideally after two and a half minutes of this phase, all the ads should be dead. If you have a couple left, they're the priority. You wanna get them down as soon as you possibly can and then you just wanna do phase one again. And then after two and a half minutes, then it'll be phase two again. Then after two and a half minutes, phase one again. However, if the boss reaches 30% HP, Phase three will start and this this is the last phase. It won't go phase one, phase two anymore. It'll just be phase three. Now in phase three, the boss will still keep the Eyes of the Empress debuff, which is the tank debuff. Make sure you're taunting on four. Uh, however, the, all the new abilities are completely new. She'll do an ability called Shar Energy, which will do 60k damage to a few players and there's nothing you can do about it. Completely mm. unavoidable. There's also another ability called Amassing Darkness and this sort of works like an anti-prayer amending. Yeah, it's a bit odd. Basically the way it works is First off, she'll do damage to player A, okay? And then after two and a half seconds, she'll do damage to player A and then player B. And then two, and then another two seconds, she'll do player A, B, and C. Then A, B, C, and D. Then A, B, C, D, and E. And then continuing on until every single player in the road has been hit. So basically, this just does a lot of damage and because of other mechanics in this phase as well, it, it, it just makes it so you just need to heal a shit ton. And this might even cause you to wipe, but there's nothing you can do about it. It's not dispellable or anything like that. You just gotta heal the shit out of everyone. There's also a debuff that's placed on random players that makes it so after four seconds, you'll do um, damage to all players within eight yards every one second for 20 seconds, as well as being feared for the duration of that 20 second debuff. Yeah. Um, so what you need to do if you do have this debuff is that you can either stack on top of each other 
Um, and after the four seconds, the initial four seconds have gone and you are feared, is mass dispel that group of people, or you can do individual dispels if you prefer. But it's just important that you, you know those people either stack up and just eat the damage, or you spread out so no one gets the damage. You know the damage only goes on there. Yeah, like a very good thing you can do is just make those two players with the vision of demise just to run to the left or the right of the group, and then just make it so you just mass dispel it very quickly. And if you haven't got a priest, just make sure you have two assigned dispellers, um, and then it'll just quickly get rid of that, and they'll be doing no damage to the rake because they're far enough out of each other, and they'll just do a little bit of damage to each other, and then they'll just come back in. It's very very simple to uh, counter that ability. Now the boss also have like a giant shockwave called Consuming Terror. Now it will face a random player and cast this massive shockwave. If you were hit by this, you take a shit ton of damage and are feared for 8 seconds. Um, don't get hit by this. It's yeah. very, very simple what you want to do. You just want to run through it. Like if it does face you, run through the boss. Because everyone will be stacked up in melee for this phase behind the boss. The tanks in front of the boss. And um, if it does face you, run through the boss. Harder mode, right? Now the most difficult part of this phase is an ability called Calamity. Now this does 50% of your current health and ticks like really frequently. Um, so you need to keep everyone as high as you possibly can as because of the amassing darkness and the shower of energy and the vision of demise. All these abilities going off at the same time with Calamity on someone on low health, it will more or less be a one shot. Yeah. It's got a feeling of Anubarak mm, from definitely. from Trial of the Grand Crusader, the way that you know there's yeah. constant tick and damage like Anubarak in the last phase. Um, so it kind of feels like that. So if you have healed that before, then you'll, you'll kind of know. Um, so yeah, it's just a lot of spam healing that's need to be done in this phase purely because of that ability. So for this phase, what you want to do is that you want to stack up behind the boss, bloodlust, and just nuke the living shit out of him and hope that you kill him before he kills you. Yeah, practically. So thank you for watching guys. If this guide to Gary did help you out, then please do give it a <laughs> thumbs up. It does help us out quite a lot. And make sure to comment, rate, and subscribe. And if you'd like to see other 10-man normal guides by Fat Boss, please do click up on the annotations you see on your screen now. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. Gary.